to do the MSQ before 6.2 comes out. Pretty sure plenty of people watch the live letter. We got to get this done. Alright. Let's see if I remember how to do this. There we go. Okay. The MSQ continues in Thafnir. I can't remember what was happening the last time. We found some treasure vault of something. Alright, before I continue MS, I mean since I'm already here, uh this is pretty sure this is the uh The Beast Tribes, yeah. The Beast Tribe for the Ar Quest Sync, okay. For the Akasha Dora. Excuse me, do you need something? Yes. I'm the man who saved Mevan's child. Huh? Yezan Alchemist of the Great Work. Looking after the kid. Oh, right, I remember that. Okay. When she's fully healed, the question of who will be in charge of her care. Yeah, both parents died and only the baby survived, yeah? I remember that one in the MSQ. Alright, we'll look for someone who can take care of the kid. Oh, so it's raining. Of umbrella. Parsin is the most motherly among us. Okay. Oh, speaking to the NPC takes away my umbrella. Sad. Okay. No one dotes over the child quite like Yezan, but alchemy isn't a merciful trade for a parent. He'd volunteer, but he has to take care of his own kid first. Alright, understandable. Carry on. Hmm. Yazan is the obvious choice, but he... oh well. So it's either you yourself or someone called Parsin. Parasin, good friend of Mevan. But other factors made him reticent to ask her. Okay, I wonder what's going on. Alright, I'll ask. Oh, she has her own child as well. Okay, maybe that's why. Pasarin. Hello. So 
So we must look forward to the day where the kid gets better and someone else will have to take care of her. <coughs> Bevan was his family to me and I view her child as my own. I would do anything to see her raise as brave a woman as her mother. But I cannot care for her. I'm not worthy to care for her. Mm hmm? Why? What's going on? No, I don't think you were too forceful. There's something going on here. What does she mean by not worthy? Alright, gathering herbs for medicine. Okay, let's go. Reddish Soma herbs. Soma. Okay. We're gonna give the kid some... Heroin. <laughs> Soma. Pretty sure that's illegal. A shrubbery. Oh, really? Those are some big snakes. Another enterprising alchemist has really harvested the herb. Okay. Okay, where's the next one? Ah, oh, there it is. All right. A pale red herb said to have powerful medicinal properties. Looks like a poppy flower. Alright. We weren't the only ones searching the jungle. He returned to find his quarter stuffed to the brim with herbs. Oh, whoever harvested the herbs came to give it to him? It was an Akashadora steward. Her name is Sula. A shy but kind of heart. Oh. Alright, let's go find Sula. Hello there. Medicine made from them is effective in treating ailments of young children. Ah. You know of Pasarin's troubles? She can shed light on the roots of Pasarin's distress. Mm-hmm. Alright. Just in time, I've... okay, so he got the medicine done. Gonna feed the baby some 
morphine. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, so what's going on with Passerine? Dazar, her beloved husband, was killed. When a veil of chaos descended upon the world, he fled into the jungle, transformed into one of those terrible beasts, returned here as a monster where her sister Chapa met his wrath. Um, I knew it was the Tsar. I froze in terror while Chapa stood undaunted. She fought alone for my cowardice. It was my fault she died. I knew this, and yet I laid blame on Passerine's shoulders. I lashed out at her, cursing her for her husband's cowardice. When both should have comforted each other in mourning, I turned my back on her. I left her to burden not one but two deaths. It's only natural she would be hesitant to look after another. I was a fool to condemn Passerine when it was my duty to protect the people here. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's, that's sad. Chapa wouldn't blame you for what happened. Nor would she want you to blame yourself. Passarin doubtless feels the same. I must apologize to her, it's the only cause. She would take time to master some courage. Wow. Oh, that got sad and dark real quick. She wants to travel to somewhere to calm her nerves. Alright, I'll follow you then, guard you along the way. Holy places are being cared for by... The, the holy pe Knowing their holy places are being cared for set these people's heart at ease. Alright, alright. Okay, we head down to Purusa. Do not shed tears for the departed, for they have now set foot upon a new journey. Do not be forlorn that your path have diverged, but look forward with joy to the day they may cross again. Whenever I think to forge a path of my own making, my legs become heavy and my heart become anxious. Sometimes standing still offers a new perspective. Yazan has a generous soul, and to have your wisdom buoy me is more than I deserve. Would that I could open my heart to Passerine in such a way. This part of the temple appears well kept. Let's check the other side. Alright. Well kept, my ass. It's a freaking ruin. I mean, it's a freaking ruin. It's, it's, it's not in use. This ancient temple is in disuse. You want to restore it and actually use it? Investigate the damaged stones. <laughs> this entire thing is damaged. What are you talking about?
Yeah, this entire this entire complex requires repair. What are you talking about? It's not just some stones. The entire building needs to be replaced. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Site of battle or some other horrible conflict. Ha. Huh. Alright, she's gonna find the right words to apologize to Passerine now. Okay. Ah, we're all here. I take it the patrol was fruitful. I administered a soothing salve to Pasarin's child. She's sleeping. It is freaking. You're applying offense to children. This is. Soma is definitely a heroine. <laughs> It was, it was my fault when my sister was killed. I stood in fear when the Tsar attacked. Yet, when it's all over, I place the blame on you. I was a fool. No, Sula, you were right. I couldn't ease his troubles. It was my fault he succumbed to despair that gnawed in his heart. We all lost something during this tragedy. It's only fate's fault. Alright, they're all still coming to terms with the final days. One final request. Pasarin is not ready to forgive herself yet, but I'm a loss at what to do. Do we leave her here? Or is there some way we can help? If she had something to remind her of her beloved, she would more easily accept his loss. Pasarin never did have the chance to say her farewell. Alright. During the chaos, most of us fled northwest to the bridge. Retrace those steps and find something that belonged to the Tsar. Alright. The Tsar did enjoy his jewelry and baubles. Okay. That's just a rock. Oh, Sula's already here. Hello. It's all just rocks. Why are there so many shiny rocks here? Oh, what the? Ah, so she found the necklace and found, I found a jewel. That's nice. We gotta repair it first. Okay.
Okay. Can you Zun repair it? He's an alchemist, not a goldsmith. Oh, Sula went to find. Okay. So your son will hold on to the jewelry. Ah, he can make glue to fix the gem into the necklace. Okay, okay. Speak with Passerine. Oh, that's fast. No. Oh. Mustn't let the tragedies of that day root us in place. All it takes is a single step forward, but you must want to take it. We must take action to see the wounds heal. Even. Rest when we are tired. Only when our energy returns can we move forward one step at a time. Ah, uh, she's not ready to care for the child. So they both take care of the kid together. <laughs> oh, he wants to give me something, okay. What's it gonna be? He had, already he had already resolved to raise the kid himself. But the prospect of having a helping hand is comforting indeed. I'd like to honor the memory of the kid's parents. Alright. If anything, it's become clear from recent events that the people of this settlement must speak to one another about their troubles. Solitary thoughts quickly turn dark. Mm. He's more than capable of treating wounds, but it takes a community to heal those that are hidden. Ah. Uh. You'll find a way, as an alchemist, a friend, and a father. Would that work more of one of me? <laughs> Alright. Although her parents are no longer with us, he must do the utmost to raise their child. In a way that meets your approval, he owes his friend that much. Mm. Oh, hey, it's her again. <laughs> okay. A shipment from Yelimat. Okay. So we need to guard, guard the convoy. 
Okie dokie. Oh, you need me to recruit someone. I know someone who could give the merchants proper motivation for speedy delivery. Huh. <laughs> Ogul and Kanaka. Okay. Oh, it's been a while since I've been here. Hey kid, how you doing? Taken to adventuring like a thief to a coin purse. <laughs> so good to see these people again. Palaka stand is beset with such troubles. Shouldn't be surprised. Alright, so they start moving supplies. Aid is on the way for much less coin than merchants would usually charge. Chaos has gripped all of Radzat Han, and only together can we find the strength to release ourselves. And if require an adventure, look no further. Alright. Uh, excitable. <laughs> okay. Let's go. Not too long ago, she was scared of elephants. <laughs> now she's all ready to adventure. Oh, look at that. That's cute. She's she's all dressed up like uh I forgot I forgot what those people are called. Rakasha will be joining us. Alright. Alright, so three of us are guarding the supplies. Okay. Oh, that's quite a long distance. Thank goodness I can fly! Oh, we are under attack by beetles. You good?
<laughs> she forgot the supplies. <laughs> Okay. Wondering. Eh, no mind. That's all right. Oh wow! The Ogul do that. Hello, Sula. Sula and Ogul teamed up. Huh. Okay. Oh. <laughs> she forgot to set her Etherite in Reunion, oh dear. How's she gonna get back home? She gotta go the long way. I don't recall having boats out of Tefnia right now. So the only way to get out is um airship in Ratsat Han. Alright. There are more supplies yet to come. Just spare no effort to see Ratsat Han rebuild. The journal? She found a journal? Oh, it's a journal of his friend. Oh, it's the R journal! Life is but a string of meetings and farewells. It is our memories that sustain us and gives us life. In this way, those whose journey has ended watches over those who with the strength to step forward into a new day. Hmm. Wisdom of her grandmother. Alright. Grandmother had a way with words. She could have thought even the divinity is a thing of the... I wouldn't be so quick to say something like that. <laughs> Speaking of divinities, I haven't done Alkea this week yet. She met Sula. Uh, in Sula, she met a comrade in arms. In Rakashir, she met an eager student, motivating her to become better. Perhaps she shall take up the art of dance. Ooh. The fierce display of the Seki Segumi compelled to set down her spear and take up the katana. But grace and deadliness with. Oh, no. <laughs> alright, alright. With some measure of peace has returned to Batanga, her skills will be better put use here. Alright. So now, Ogul will be guarding um, Palakar's stand. Hmm. 
Mm. Mm. Safeguard Palakas then. Our, supply, our lack of supplies was weighing heavily on my mind. I feared for both Passerine and the child. Ogul's presence have proven a salve on Sula's mood. Ah, that's good. The delivery of the journal was an unexpected boon. Alright. Ah. The next blue quest is all the way to town. Here. Yelimat. Well, let me check something. Have I finished it? Yeah, I, yeah, I finished it. Finished the Shadowbringers, um, Beast Stripes. All right, Kanaka, Kan Kana, how can I help you? Mm -hmm. Hippo sightings, a veritable herd of hippos. Hippos are the most dangerous animal, like one of the most dangerous animals out there in, in, in real life. Um, after the mosquito, if I'm not wrong. They've killed more people. Huh, I thought it was normal for Thafnir. <laughs> Hippos long inhabited Vanaspati. Quite unusual to see them travel outside in such numbers. Harrowing travellers on the road. Huh. Hippos have been displaced by the fires beset the jungle during the final days. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Alright, Ogul is not here, so I'll deal with the hippos. Oh, it's already the beast tribe. Okay, okay. Question the residents about the hippos. Hurtling hippos. Barreling down the high road at tremendous speed, frightening the watch. Adorable yet fearsome creatures, the hippos. Yeah, that's right. Alright. Here you are. Second time he has answered the question. <laughs> okay. Refugee. Trina. Okay. Trina head off to the perfume rice. Dreadful Akashadora up north? Hitching carts to the hippos. Wait, what's going on up there? Hello. What are you in the middle of? What is that on the road? Yeah, I'm looking for hippos. What the heck is happening to the hippos? I was hoping to put paid to this before it got out of hand. Oh, the hippos are coming? Okay. Oh, she left fruits out for the hippos. Here they come. I hear that. Oh, what the? F oh, 
Oh, they are racing. Those are hippo cards. They are not wild hippos. Holy sh... Hey, no stopping. Oh, they're eating. <laughs> Now you've done it, Hamza heads. Maru, what did I tell you about riding this high road? Oh, they're kids. The roads back home are no good for riding no more, boss. We ain't got out of a choice. Hurtling hippos are dangerous. Yeah, roaring down the main road, kicking up dust longs, just scaring people. But you really forgot the Tower of Zord, the fires and screaming and the people turning. You really think raising a racket is what people need right now? <laughs> In case you ain't got it through your heads, I'll spell it out for you. Our racing days are over. They were over yesterday and they were over the day before that too. Take it, this solves your hippo mystery? Yes, yes it does. <coughs> now, this was unexpected. So even in real life, hippos are actually remarkably fast. They are what, like, don't look, don't look down on their stubby little legs. They actually can run really quick in short bursts. They're terrible at turning though, so if you're ever chased by a hippo, remember to run zigzag. That might just save your life one day. I was expecting news about hippos. Perhaps you brought back a few lost souls as well. <laughs> she came to apologize. Alright, so now we've got manpower to help. Alright. Crew of a... They can do goods delivery to... Um... Yeah, they can deliver goods to Palaka stand. You ever considered delivery work? Local trade is on its way to recovery. Domestic trade is very important. So they can ride their hippos and earn the respect of people along the way. Fantastic! Oh, you want me to show them how it's done? Parcel intended for the great works. Medicinal herb from Gridania. Alright. Okay, let's do this. Speak with Trina. Hey Amaru, everything going alright? 
work, respect us. At least we won't have scrawn drop for food anymore. All right. Hippocart delivery, let's do this. All right, let's ride the hippo carts. Not a bad way to travel, eh? My crew designed these carts from scratch, you know? Historically, we at Crescidora never went around in chocobo carriages and the like. At some point, I wondered, why not? We're a, sure, we're a heavy bunch, but nothing is impossible if you put your mind to it, right? Well, after auditioning all kinds of critters, we finally came round to hippos. Hippo riding is a team effort. Our hippos can sprint with the best of them, but they ain't got a lot of stamina, so a good rider knows when to push and when to let it rip. So we hand over the goods now. And Alchemist is waiting for the delivery. Yes, I'm the one who saved Dana. Hello. No large trading vessel can dock here. Our orders are usually offloaded in El Nair and shipped by Dao, but they get mixed up with the packages destined for Yelamad. Logistical nightmare begins. Alright, get your herbs. Importing this is trying enough without delivery mishaps. <laughs> yeah, that happens. Yes, you can make a difference. Delivery business is very important. Logistics is so important when it comes to rebuilding or even just building a country. Right. Get back to Kankana? But my hippo needs a breather. Alright. Oh, I'll be riding her hippo this time. Alright, so back to Yelimut. Let's stick to the roads. Oh, uh, well, this road. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. A 
That's a big elephant. All right, we're fine. Should be fine as long as we stick to the main road. We're here. Mission accomplished. Speak with Kan. Speak with Kan Kana. Hello. Delivery went well. Building trust won't be easy. All right. Ah, they feel good doing good in the world. All right. Oh, what? Am I going to be the uh, overseer? You got spirit, kid. I'm with you. New home. Possession of an old trading post that has fallen into disuse. Structures are worse for wear, but the plot itself is conveniently located. For a small fee. If your business fails to turn a profit, you have to reuse that space. Alright. Alright, round up your people. I think I know where it is, yeah. Ah, uh, yep. So this place is called Svarna. Bigger, bigger than he thought, but it's a dump. Well, we'll be rebuilding this place. This place is no Megaduta, but once we get the basics up and running, it'll feel like home. Carts, for starters. Place to store packages. But they're giving it a shot. They got a team name. Hippo Riders. <laughs> Ooh. Looky, looky here. Yes, yes. Led by the charismatic leader Trina, the Hippo Riders have retired from racing and rebranded themselves as speedy delivery workers. They're still known on the island as local delinquents. Use your experience as an adventurer and trusted hero to help them better their reputation. Alright. Hippo Riders Beast Tribe Quest Unlocked. All right. Oh, I'll accept the quest first. I will do them off stream. All right, back 
to the MSQ. So the last we left off, as I recall, um, we finished that dungeon. No, I can't. We found the gold. We're gonna redistribute the gold to um, everyone, if I recall correctly. Matsya. He's still trying to sell fish, banding together as best he can. All right. Speak to the locals in Yelimet. I am not Estinian. <laughs> you can't cheat me, brother. You cheated us. You mean a spear totting fellow? <laughs> you can hardly blame a man for trying. <laughs> Jeez. What's up? Port is in shambles. Trade routes are open and the danger has passed. But no small merchants, number of merchants had had to sell their ships to make ends meet in the short term. Add that to the sailors we've lost in the final days, it's little wonder the flow of exports is little more than a trickle. If Kazal and his consortium were still with us, I'm sure we have found a way to turn our fortunes around. God's rest his soul. Alright, we gotta report to Marshan. Yep, the civilians are struggling. To the Megaduta. Yo, Asinian. So apparently, Asinian is famous in Thafnir now. Why do you retain this vessel now your true form is known? You could have flown across the island in a fraction of a time. Be that as it may, the sight of a massive creature descending from the sky can be startling to say the least. And there are few places I can enter comfortably without risk of flattening some cart or stall. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Fair enough. <laughs> as for my inquiries, the people of Falakas stand were unanimous in their reply. They are surviving. Resources were stretched to the limit when refugees were pouring in. But they persevered with some assistance from Yelimad. From what I understand, there have always been an independent community. Hunters, foragers and the like. I was assured the jungle provides their needs for the most part. Palakas Stan has weathered the disaster better than most it seems. I myself heard good news and bad. The quarrymen were optimistic, having sold a wagon of giant skull to a foreign trader. But such visitors are few and far between. Compared to our best years, the weight of stone leaving Thavnir has been light indeed. Our nation is small, isolated, its prosperity dependent on the steady stream of exports. We must identify any obstacle to the flow of trade 
so that we may begin working to remove them. Tell me, what did you learn in Akil, Akli, Akali and Yalimad? Without a dedicated buyer, an average fisherman must struggle to offload his daily catch. Which is why I believe we should first address the lack of ships and shortage of able-bodied sailors in Yalimad. I'm reminded of a child I spied as I made my way back to the palace. His father lost at sea when beasts sunk their vessel. Many variations of the same tragic tale repeated over and over. So many lives lost. Enough grief to drown in if we allow ourselves to be overcome. But we did not. Tian Estinian, I consider your perspectives that you have brought me and devise a plan to help my people confront this adversity. Come, I'd like you to be in attendance when I announce the proposal to my assembled functionaries. Okay. Let the spice flow. What of the children who were left without family to care for them? That is a concern which weigheth heavily upon my mind. A simple gift of coin will soon be exhausted, leaving these young souls adrift on the fringes of our society. You can't just throw money at everything and expect it to be solved. Shall we follow in the path of the Doman Adventurer's Guild? <laughs> Idol Shire's orphanage was funded through trade in highly coveted goods. Shall be written requiring all who receive of our 
Very good. Very good. Let's tribute it to this guy. In that time of strife, any one of us could have broken. Any one of us may have been taken by despair. When I think of Kalzal, I feel no hatred. Only a stinging regret that we could not save him as well. Isn't that right, men? This bodes well for that boy. Narad, was it? Perhaps he can cut ties with that shady peddler. This initiative shall be known as the Kalzar Foundation. You know, I never noticed this before, but look at Vitra's body. His scales have yet to recover. He's still wounded, giving so many scales to create the warding talisman. Dragon and man, side by side in pursuit of a brighter morrow. It's gonna be just like Ishgard. Vitra is warming up to his role as Satrap. Clearly all the years behind the curtains were not spent napping. Thank you for putting in putting forth Kazal's name. Those who live uh, those whose lives he enriched will take comfort in seeing his legacy honored. You'll forgive me for not speaking sooner. I bear a message from Archon Ishtola. She asks that you meet her at the High Crucible at your earliest convenience, or Ishtola has summoned us. Finish her studies at the Void Gate. Alright. Vashan is coming with us. Alright. Gonna find your sister? My clerks are the well oiled cogs of this administration. Since before Arhewan assumed the office, they understand what needs to be done. I'm curious to learn what conclusions your Archon has made regarding the gate's unique construction. Alright, let's go meet Cat Waifu.
All right, Yashtola, what do you have for us? Right, here we all are. You discovered something new. I took a closer look at that device. I was able to determine how it keeps the void gate sealed, but not how it might instead be employed to expand the opening. For that, I would need to reference the technique developed by Reacher's alchemists, no records of which appear to have survived the intervening years. We know this, so why have you sent for us? Have you learned all of value or not? Patience, good sir. One must introduce the subject before launching into specifics. Well, are we going to have a lecture about... From what we understand, travel between worlds is accomplished by passing through the nebulous rift which exists between them. Mm -hmm. Picture, if you will, the moment you were called to the first. Mm. Okay. Flying through the stars in the deep void. Yeah, I remember that. Memories all around. You touched a focus of some kind to help the Exarch pinpoint your location. His summoning spell then channeled the energies of the Crystal Tower to begin your journey to his world. Yep. The magics tore a hole in the wall separating Source and Shard and cast you into the intervening nothingness. In that place, the laws of nature hold no sway. Yet even through this realm of temporal and spatial instability, you were born safely to your destination in the first. The feet that guided you across such an unimaginable distance, both physical and metaphorical, was nothing short of a miracle. But what of the many voids soon found in the source? Who guides them here, and how? An excellent question. Though there are several methods by which the Void's denizens might intrude upon our world, the rituals of summoning are the most typical. For example, let us consider the Gargoyle, a creature of middling power. such an entity, the prospective summoner must force open a void gate. The portal lasts but a moment and is relatively small, allowing only an imp or other lesser being to squeeze through with their physical body intact. Powerful gargoyle, however, is too large for that. Creating a gate big enough for him would require vast amounts of energy, far beyond the reserves of any one mortal practitioner. Instead, it is far more common to bring over only the entity's soul. We had a taste of that ourselves when a certain exarch dragged us to the first. <laughs> and just as our bodies remained in our world, the void sense physical form is left behind in the 13th. at its destination, the summoned soul is granted a temporary shell to inhabit. In the gargoyle's case, 
A stone effigy has proven a suitable vessel. You said that Voicent must be called here deliberately by someone in the source, reeled in like a fisherman with his catch. Exactly. For a being to navigate the chaos of the rift, with or without form, there must needs be a guiding agent on the other side. When the hordes called forth from Alag's Great Gate, it was the technologists who drew them through. Though, to my knowledge, planar fissures are, in essence, natural passages between our world and the Void, which require no such guidance to traverse. Why is only the boundary between the Source and the Thirteenth so fragile? So much so that it often tears open of its own accord. I believe solving that mystery is key to understanding travel between the Source and its reflections. How do you intend to get your answers? No. The danger is too great. Perhaps. But what some call danger, others think of as a danger. <laughs> All right. <laughs> It sounds like fun. I assure you I was most attentive. And I agree that to go alone would be certain death. But if I were to bring along one who has already braved the 13th and humbled the cloud of darkness, well, I imagine my chances would be much improved. <laughs> so much for taking it easy. <laughs> Since when were you one for the quiet life? <laughs> Once again, I put my life in your ever reliable hands. As long as you don't throw yourself down another pit. That said, as much as I would like to march straight back to the void gate, there is the small matter of being unable to open it without the Sartrap's personal authority. <laughs> As I said before, I will grant you and yours any boon you choose to make, provided it does not endanger my people. You have my word that we will take every precaution. Not a single void scent will be allowed to threaten Radzatan, assuming we manage to expand the portal in the first place. You have a plan. Actually, I had hoped you might help us with that. I presume the alchemists you retained supplied you with some explanation of their methodology. That they did. House Daimir was overseeing the project. Daimir. Ah, yes. The family associated with the great work. I did not fully comprehend the theory, but their research began with a void scent which had slipped through the fissure. After a thorough examination, they created an arcane simulacrum possessed of similar qualities. A man-made void scent, if you will. It was apparently indispensable in their efforts to enlarge the gate. A man-made void scent? Hmm. Yes. Being great admirers of the Archons, House Daimir submitted detailed notes to Charlene's official committee. 
They expected praise and accolades for their simulacra. And were thus devastated to be informed that their work had been classified as prohibited material. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty dangerous. If that's true, then those notes might still be stored in a forbidden archive somewhere. Not Google, of course, since that library had yet to be built. Which leaves us with... Raha's favorite place to sneak around. Indeed, Numenon's restricted stacks may very well hold a copy. In which case, I say we head directly to Charlian. Where are you going, Asinian? Unless you anticipate needing help to reach the high shelves, I see myself being of little use. <laughs> Go on ahead. Still need to find Mirad and tell him about the Kalzal Foundation. Uh, that makes sense. Let us be on our way as well. Astinian has a way with kids. I mean, your dad trusted me. Maybe you should too. But your dad is asleep right now, huh? Stola. Let's take some G pose if you stole her.
She was apprentice to Master Motari at the age of seven. Huh. So Yishlola never attended the studium. Thancred. Louis Zwa took him in right after off the streets and put in the care of another Archon. Hmm. Here at the last turn after a day of lectures. <laughs> oh, that sounds lovely. Afternoon with friends sipping tea and debating theories. <laughs> and, uh... Master Motoshin, it's been a while. <laughs> Secure permission to enter the Numenon's restricted archives. Oh, -ho, no further forays into the stacks this time, eh? I applaud this newfound sense of propriety, yet in all the wide world's comparative serenity, what compels you to disturb a vault of forbidden wisdom? <laughs> Fascinating, I have no idea such a technique existed. The research left behind him by House Demir had lain dormant in Shalyan's archive for many centuries. Surely you don't intend to cross into the void? That is in fact precisely what we intend. To what end, pray tell? To develop a method of traversing the rift. For one, I might keep my word to a distant friend. Ah. Oh. <laughs> I have journeyed to the end of existence, heard, felt, and thought endlessly of the truth of our world and the echo of its future. Yet I want to understand everything, to unravel it all down to the last secret. What scholar worthy of its name wouldn't force open a void gate or two if a grand revelation was the promised reward? Marvellous! What an audacious proposal, worthy of Master Matoya herself! After hearing the wise and wherefores, I, for one, do not believe you would use the knowledge for ill. I see no reason not to present your request to the forum for consideration. Although your petition would be better received if you also had the support of another well-placed acquaintance. Fortunal? Why, well, Master Fortunal, of course. 
You can hardly ignore an earnest request from the dear of his dear children's most treasured com comrades. <laughs> I was hesitant to approach him directly, but there's no denying having Master Fortuno on our side would tip the balance in our favor. We'll pay a visit to the Lavalier estate and plead our case. One last thing before you go. I'll consider it a personal favor if you might share with me the discoveries you make in the void. My appetite for knowledge is every bit as insatiable as your side wager. So if you could see your way into indulging an old man's curiosity. Alright. Alright, you know, before I head over, let me pick up some of the... Inagashi is worried for her professor. Excuse me, kind sir, pardon my forthrightness. But I may beg a moment of your time. I work under Professor Tankin and am in search of a capable miner to assist in his research. That is your profession, is it not? I wish to put, discuss potential employment with the Faculty of Anthropology. Assuming that's what you have an interest. Anthropology, alright. Searchers meet. Gleaners connect with faculty and students of the studium. Acquire necessary materials for study. A place to store specimens. Where's this Professor Tankin? It's indecisive. If he doesn't hurry and submit a research proposal, he'll be unable to secure funding for his work. His very tenure could be cut short. Great loss for the studium, as he is a remarkable scholar. My first task would be to procure Professor Tankin himself. <laughs> okay. Offer him a slice of our corn loaf. All right. Hey, Drew. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear, if only he were here to help. Uh, why are you so scared? I heard you have work for me. Faculty of Astronomy enlisted it. Astronomers Association. He's the sole member. Until this year, he was. Oh, but the others graduated. Ah. He wanted access to their telescope. Faculty of Astronomy and all its constituents, Classical Astronomer Association, has been urged by the forum to contribute a national project. So he's unable. Oh, there's a national project. Okay, okay. Hmm. The telescope is old and in state of disrepair. No craftsman has been willing to accept his request. Yeah? Why not just make a new one?
So he's gonna have to start researching how to make a telescope. De Broy, student of nutritional science. Yep. Oh. Uh huh. Experimental foodstuffs. Oh no. That doesn't sound like a good idea. Oh, he's freaking out. What's going on? <coughs> yeah, I'm a craftsman. Boric. Employer of a professor in the studium. Alright. Professor Rurusha. Field of archaeology. Alright, they're looking... Trying to... Are they trying to restore a relic? Let me have a look at the relic. Ah, this is for Fisher. Okay. Associate Professor Talia Tia. Alright. He's trying to figure out his thesis. He needs a fish. Oh, that's a lot of fish. Fish tank is empty. Research water veins, not old ones. Those that carry aether. Huh. Popular fishing spots are often aether rich as well. And that makes sense. He's trying to research spectral currents. Oh yeah, I've seen them. Earth currents are important for aquatic life, okay. Specimens of fish from various bodies of water. Confirm hypothesis regarding underwater aether currents. Areas most worth researching happen to be the hardest to reach. Okay. Suffer from a particular case of aether sickness. He can't use the aether net or teleportation. Oh, poor guy. And <laughs> the orologist who can't stomach Aether. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's see here.
Which one is this again? The broy is food, right? Arcon loaf. It looks like Arcon loaf. Initial flavor is like numbness on the tip of your tongue, which gradually transitions into a overall sense of crushing emptiness. It's the worst thing I've ever eaten. Doesn't it taste awful? Perfect meal. Flavor is irrelevant. What? By the very concept of gourmet cuisine has led to all manner of unhealthy excess. Too much salt, too much sugar, entirely too much fatty content is employed in the pursuit of satisfying this obsession with taste. The panel loaf we are laboring so hard to produce will contain everything sus necessary to sustain an adult body in one efficient, con easily consumed serving. The perfect meal. Um, Professor, may I introduce? By Thalia, all this time wasted on idle chatter. If we are to attain true perfection, then every spare moment must be spent on our research. Your task is to improve the panel of digestibility, is it not? Then let us be on with it. Swift, sure, efficient. Is that supposed to be Gordon Ramsay? <laughs> the professor's brusque manner. It's eccentric, but the field of nutritional science is practically built on the foundation of that man's research. Oh, he's the one who invented Archon Loaf. Come to the last stand, I'll offer you something to cleanse your palate. <laughs> Fast fashion, fast fashion. Over here, all right. What's wrong, Boric? Perhaps if you were weren't quite so busy wasting time, this is clearly more little more than rubbish. There are limits to our funding and facilities. The faculty can't afford to wait waste time on projects. Oh, it's an old halafel. <laughs> Chris Crone. Yep, I'm the artisan. He didn't ask for my name. Humble professor of archaeology. Alright. Attempting to restore some artifact. Huh. Relic of Saint Diata. The Golden Diata. An excavation we found independent venture, okay. It looks like a Namazu. If she if she thinks it's a mammoth. Doesn't look like a standard Udan mammoth, but the inside are complex. Just need to get it fixed. Okay. She thinks he has special abilities. The insides are a mess. 
got to find replica, create replica parts. All right. All right, we will need to work on the housing before we start replicating the interior. Okay. All right, I'll do this next time. Let's unlock the rest. Oh, wait, let's talk that. over to the rest uh cultured pursuits cultured pursuits tankin that's uh Let's find Professor Tankin. There he is. That's easy. Is he asleep? He's asleep. Hmm. Here's your Archon Loaf. Okay. Calls into mind the tale of a researcher seeking a means to traverse the ethereal sea. He wished to do so while among the living, but they found him dead in a pile of books. Oh dear, these researchers. Hey, Drew. So, looking for the books. History of Observatories. Comprehensive overviews of the stars, of starlands, and so encyclopedia of astronomical telescopes. All right, I got all your books. He's having a look through the books. Starlands. Ancient tools used by astronomer to read the stars. Can be produced at a reasonable cost. Hmm, but what good can an ancient tool accomplish? Doesn't even use the lens. 
might ask you to craft one for me. Alright, we can give it a shot. To the workshop. Okay. Alright, let's see how bad your Aether Sickness is. Oh wow. Immediate. Ha, <laughs> he's really down. Dear goodness. Okay, yep. Oh, what the f- What? What? <laughs> it's really dreaming of pixies, what the heck? Professor Nelly Yep, I'm helping him out. Terrible Aether Sickness, but as a scholar, he has as much potential as anyone. <laughs> Professor Nelly leading authority in Aetherology. Some say he's an equal of Master Matoya. Wow, okay, holy shit. <laughs> he, handle, he handles alcohol as badly as he handles Aether. <laughs> Leave it to me. Alright, let's have some real food. Finally, some good fucking food. <laughs> oh, she works here? Ooh, that looks nice. I'm not studying, I actually work here in the kitchen. Ah, uh, that makes sense. Incredible, it's as if my tongue has been purified by divine nectar. Take a lobster, freshly caught from the indigo, indigo deep. Scoop out the meat, saute with butter and salt olive oil. Steam in white wine, be careful not to overcook. Put it back in a shell, sprinkle liberally with thyme, oregano, rose... Um, can someone record this? I'm gonna give. I need. I need. I need to give this a shot. I need to try. <laughs> Thank you. I will take your word for it. 
cooking is something of a passion of hers. Uh, that's why she's trying to salvage, salvage the culinary arts of, um, old Charlayan. Uh. A singular meal that can provide daily nutrients. Develop food supply for emergencies. Our corn loaf was never praised for its flavor. <laughs> The more nutrients you pack into the mix, the more revolting it becomes. Volunteers have been known to rack up the content of their belly after a single sample. <laughs> oh dear. Suspecting the difficulty with digestion was to blame. It make it easier to stomach, but it simply just tastes terrible. If there was some emergency and we were forced to live on Penelope alone, People would survive, but they would wish they haven't. <laughs> if the forum adopts this recipe, there's a real chance it might champion Penelof as not only a candidate for emergency supplies, but a new nationwide food staple. <laughs> oh no! Trailer prefers meals that are easily prepared, easily consumed, over more flavorful, less time-efficient culinary efforts. Scholars busy with their research will settle for sandwiches more often than not. The ambivalent attitude towards food is exactly why I fear this horrible bread might be actually be accepted into our everyday diet. <laughs> oh no. Okay, we need to save. We need to save Charlie, and this is more important than everything else. The fight for Charlie's survival is actually over here. Oh no! Exceedingly difficult to enhance the taste without sacrificing nutritional value. All right, all right. We need to save them. <laughs> The battle for Charlayan's survival. The war for the very soul of Charlayan. Alright, it's Hanukkah and Hinegashi. Does she have a crush on a professor? The culture of Shalayan remains stagnant and threadbare as the attire we wear day in and day out. Are you content to let your children live in such austere conditions? And your children, 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 professor, would you why would you bring up such a thing? <laughs> she has a crush on him. What the hell is going on between these two? This has been wonderful, but I should be going. <laughs> And deny us the pleasure of your company. I long wish the help of a third party. Insist and stay for our research. The party is splendid. <laughs> this girl is so crushing on him. And this guy is so oblivious. Oh dear god. Recreate the lifestyle of other cultures within this building. Huh. 
gather material for reconstructions. You yeah, decide which culture to emulate. Huh. Oh, oh no, oh shit, I pressed the wrong button. Just ate a potion for no good reason. I'm gonna take that off my action bar. Huh. Single flower can go by many names. Different regions know it differently. We went on to talk about how difference in language, location, lifestyle can have a profound impact on how we think. We aura has our roots in the Far East, though I only know the Shalayan way of life. This is the Wolf Superior Hypothesis. Just the two of you, eh? What are you implying with that tone? Uh, perhaps it was time. Yeah, she is, she is fond of him. It's a little more disconcerting that he has not noticed my feelings when you have. His focus, research focus is creating a better life. Alright. <laughs> he wants to control the environment? Uh huh. I made it the culture of rats at Han. Okay. The vibrant oh materials for the vibrant dyes of Ratsat Han. Okay, cool. Hanish stable. All right, what fish do you need? Uh, before we go anywhere, labyrinthos first. Control. So he wants a control group. Okay. Giant Aether Laos. Hey, Jude. Alright. So, we're gonna create a star lens. Okay. Who is this? Jeromir. Oh, his childhood friend. Okay.
I want to join him in the faculty of literature. <laughs> oh, trying to get the girls, this guy. Huh. Oh, he's here to call him a nerd. Are you fucking serious? Was that your friend? So as, as children, they were fascinated by the stars. They saw, a, they saw a light, but they couldn't figure out what it was. So that's why he wants to be an astronomer. He has lost interest. Huh. You're not alone. Stalin's Breeze. Okay. Shalian's Louders must be saved. So we need to make a sweetener, okay. <laughs> to the MSQ. Let's just run over. Taking the long way just in case there's any conversation circles if you stole along the way. Da 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 da
Ah, conversation circles. Is Fortunal home? All right, he is home. Fantastic. Hmm. Amelians would invite you inside for tea, but I assume this is not a social visit. You have some manner of import to discuss. Trade and proceed, you have my full attention. I suppose I should praise you for following proper protocols this time around. You do understand the restricted archives are restricted for a good reason, yes? If no pressing needs exist, then why risk the consequence of employing this forbidden knowledge? For a brother who misses his sister, she was his guardian and a friend, a selfless hero who crossed the rift between worlds to save her homeland from horror and suffering. But a brother had given up on thoughts of reunion. He spent his efforts elsewhere, watching over people, yet healing from flames of the final days, loyal to his duties while betraying the longing in his heart. There's no vital mission, perhaps, reuniting the siblings, but it's a worthy cause to pursue all the same. Reflections are very much a mystery to us. Offering to share your experience in a first should constitute as fair exchange for cooperation. Do not celebrate just yet. The forum must be convinced. I will add your request to the list of today's deliberation and deliver the decision to you at the Baldassian Annex. All right. All right, return to the annex. It's nice running around with you, Yishtola. Ah, I'm on the Shane and Fortune. Oh. What did the forum decide? Master Matoya burned some bridges here in Shalai and salted the earth for good measure. When it became clear that her student was the petitioner in question, no few members voiced their discontent. Then the chamber was reminded in no uncertain terms, I might add, of the incredible debt we owe to you and your companions. <laughs> <laughs> Don't blush, sir. Serve to silence the grumbles and stiffen a few spines. The permission was not extended lightly. Forbidden knowledge is to be treated with utmost caution. There will be repercussions if there were not. I wish you well in your endeavour. Bid you good day. Haha, <laughs> Sundari. Ah, 
Uh, if you're five years younger, he would join us. <laughs> that would be cute. As a child, I dream of a number of schemes to get my hands on the doors of Forbidden Tomes. Now I can simply walk through the door. <laughs> Alright, let's do this. Okay. Oh, so if there's dialogue, yeah, okay, I completely forgot about that. So if there's dialogue to be had, there is a marker on the map. Alright. Pudding way, hello. I guess my pudding wasn't needed to stop the final days after all. To think the set of instruction I lovingly imagine may actually exist. A few yams were okay. <laughs> Archon is Stola and guest identified. Do you wish to proceed to the Forbidden Archives? Follow me, you watch a step. Please note that use of naked flames is discouraged. Oh, what's with the dramatic entry? Same music from Google Library. Today in a world not my own, met the most beautiful Voidborn creature. Eyes blazing, not with hunger but with trembling, like the candle's flame, threatening to flicker out at any moment. I wonder if she is even a proper... Huh. No smoking, no throwing books, no yelling Eureka in an obnoxiously loud voice. <laughs>
Yes, the ether signature is unmistakable. I've felt the traces of House Damia's resonance many times at the Great Work. Time to see what all the fuss was about. Hmm. Among the ranks of the Void Sent, there exist entities with the power to call forth their brethren from beyond. The species known as Atomos, however, is uniquely prodigious in this regard. From its distended maw, it can expel an endless procession of Void-born creatures. A talent which sorely tested the Radiant Host in its battles against these abominations. Surmising that the entity itself was acting as a void gate, we endeavored to capture a small specimen and subsequently examine its physiological structure. Our findings revealed that the Atomos had absorbed a planar fissure into its own flesh, which it could expand at will into a functioning gate. Huh. Upon further analysis, we identified an ethereal wave pattern emitted during this process. A pattern we were able to emulate by passing crystal stored ether through a specially designed prism. We proceeded to embed said prism into an arcane simulacrum, thus completing what we have dubbed our artificial atomos. Hmm. There's some dark arts right there. I've been so blind to the possibilities. This species, not to mention its ability to summon void scent, has been discussed among academics for years now. Just before the advent of the seventh umbral calamity, we received reports of Atomos sightings from every corner of Eorzea. Surely you've at least heard the tales. And still. House Damir went and built a mock Atomus of their very own. I'm not surprised the Archons consigned their work to a restricted archive. It was no easy task, but at last we've unearthed the volume we've been searching for. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't tempted to stay longer. See what other forbidden titles might be lurking on these shelves? Ah, but that would be abusing the very special privilege we've been granted now, wouldn't it? Better not. Oh. All right, back to Nidana.
forbidden knowledge, filled with forbidden research, and you put it right into the hands. <laughs> All right. Let's see what chaos would ensue. Oh, so are we gonna build? We're gonna build our own mock automos. Ishtola might be rushing it a little bit. There we go. Can't imagine this body of water being particularly special. But since they say it's aetherly dense, I guess it's probably blessed or something. Estinian of Vashan is here. Fantastic. Ah, oh, no, the wildlife is fine. Time to head back down. <laughs> Please don't whack the guardians. I gotta rebuild them every time you do.
I still need to whack the few of them. Oh no! <laughs> Estinian. The ruins alone were impressive enough, but I never dreamed such a treasure lay hidden in the depths of the bounty. It may have been helpful to know this device existed, Your Excellency. My apologies. The gate was a secret I shared with none but my closest advisors. I feared for what might happen should those with ill intentions learn of its existence. Fair enough. What is it you're doing now? Good question. There's something I wish to verify. The Noah reports claim that a short stint into the void carries little risk of etheric imbalance. Should one suffer an injury, however, or if one's expedition drags on longer than intended, that risk becomes significantly greater. Mm -hmm. Graha theorized that a warding scale would confer protection from the void's corrupting influence. But I would prefer to test that hypothesis before we set foot in the 13th ourselves. Fair enough. So, this is an experiment of sorts? Yes, an experiment. Tell me, how would you go about testing the efficacy of the warding scale? Say nothing and look meaningfully at Estinian. What? Why are you looking at me like that? Surely you'd not expect me to wriggle through that tiny portal. <laughs> we needn't attempt anything so drastic. A small familiar should serve well enough. Now, a lowly imp can navigate a fissure, no matter how narrow. Which means an arcane entity of similar stature should be able to manage the same. Are you going to create a poxy? I hadn't wanted it to come to this, but no other familiars will do, I'm afraid. Oh, or one of the frogs? I mislike the sound of that. What manner of fiend does she mean to summon? From ocean rise and cloud bank form, from mountain spring. What is she gonna summon? Stored, from river flow and life be born. Water, water. I fear she's been possessed. <laughs> oh, come now. That was adorable. Oh. <laughs> Though not my first choice, these familiars I conceived of as a child have the best chance of fitting through the gate. I only wish my younger self had considered a more dignified ending to the creation ritual. <laughs> In any case, these two should serve as well. Oh man, I should have taken a screenshot of that. This one will bear a warding scale. And when they return from the 13th, we can observe how the talisman, or absence thereof, has affected the progress of the Void's corruption. If I could impose upon you to open the gate. Your Excellency? Ah, yes, of course. 
We should also be wary of voice sense slipping through while we conduct our experiment. Estinian, you are to keep Nadana safe from harm. As you say. <laughs> you had best be on your guard as well. Froth and foam. <laughs> oh, are you volunteering to join the Nixies? I could shrink you down, you know. <laughs> Let us begin, shall we? Huh. Hope they're gonna be all right. Sister, save me! I'll never see a stola the same way again. Froth and foam, indeed. <laughs> I struggle to picture Yishtola as a little girl. Easier to believe she sprang fully formed in one of the Materia's cauldrons. I think we've waited long enough. Nixis, return to my side. Thank you, little one. You did well. Poor thing. Its essence has been irrevocably warped. Okay. Oh. Oh. Well, that was a sharp lesson in the dangers of void gates. And what of our experiment? I'm sure the results speak for themselves. The unprotected Nixie has suffered extensive etheric corruption. As Nidana observed, it's well on its way to becoming a void scent. The one merged with the talisman, however, appears unaffected. 
I sense no changes to its equilibrium. Rest now, little ones. Rahel's theory was correct, then. So it would seem. But while our second familia was untouched by void energies, the talisman itself shows signs of degradation. It was, mm. of course, originally designed to shield the soul from primal tempering. It stands to reason that etheric corruption of a different sort would affect it differently. We may need to modify the warding scale's design to account for the 13th's uniquely unstable ether. You've said much of the Void's instability, but my imagination fails me. What manner of place is this broken world? Ah, my apologies. I forget that not all of us spend our days sequestered in dusty archives. The 13th is a reflection of the source that was drowned in a flood of darkness. In Emmett Selk's own words, this tragedy was a result of the Asians' attempts to force a rejoining. They erred in their haste, and made of that world a useless void. You remember Una Kalhai, the unusual child we met during our troubles with the Warring Triad. He explained the fate of the 13th thus. The champions of that ill-fated world use the stone known as Aurasite to contain the power of primals, but those self-same heroes were gradually corrupted by the Aurasite's bleeding energies, transforming into fiends with an endless hunger for ether. By the time anyone thought to oppose them, Light's strength had grown too feeble, and the balance of the 13th tipped into eternal darkness. And what of your own experience? Will you tell us of what you observed during Noah's expedition? <clears throat> I can picture it now. The sunless, Stygian expanse, infested with legions of ether-starved monstrosities. A void in every sense of the word. What you have described in such lurid detail is exactly why I hesitate to encourage you. Worry not, Great Retra. Our journey into the 13th is but the first leg of a longer voyage. A voyage that shall lead us to other reflections, to new mysteries and discoveries. And I mean to be there every step of the way. First, I must focus on refining the warding talisman. Then I can begin work on constructing an artificial atomos. Or I could, if I had the relevant manuals to hand. Might I be so bold as to request access to the Sartrap's family archive? Oh. <clears throat> Your Excellency? Oh, yes, that can be arranged. I will speak to my officials upon our return. We will see you back in the city then.
Uh, Sinian has no interest in visiting the Void. And he discusses later, he has something else to do. <clears throat> Maybe Graha? <laughs> she has a good reason to not explain her Nixie ritual. <laughs> Garland Ironworks. We've been there before. Alright, we're hitting the Rogus Reach. Oh! Direct communicate- direct transportation here. Alright, I'm gonna take a short break. Gonna need to take a piss. Have some dinner. Be right back.
All right, got a quick bite. I'm back. Okay, Junior Ironworks Engineer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, where is it? Oh, Sid is here? Okay. Ah, Sid is here. How you doing, old buddy, old pal? Maybe Nero should come along. Nero has relevant corruption experience. <laughs> the best bet is to prevent the talisman from being damaged in the first place. Okay. Coating agent for strengthening trinkets. Okay. You have made the solution is just to armor up the. <laughs> so the solution is just to armor up the the the, the talisman. What the hell? <laughs> That's simple. Nero has compiled the data on the thirteenth. Oh, okay. Oh, so we had to head back to Nidana. Jesse, how are you doing, Jesse? Any updates on the artificial Atomos? Ah, hey Stola! The adjustments are going well, I hope? Tis a lengthy process, but the end is in sight, yes. That's wonderful news! I myself had some good fortune searching through the Sartrap's private records. What I found was a transaction log dated around the same period as when Alzadal's legacy was built. It included a purchase list of highly exclusive alchemical components. And I knew I'd discovered the key to making the artificial atomos. Okay. I then visited the High Crucible to commission the material. After I'd explained my requirements, I was beset by volunteers insisting I allow them to help with the entire project. The usual reaction to someone forcing open a void gate is to run for the hills. Harnish academics certainly are a different breed. <laughs> the alchemists of old were cut from a similar cloth. The unknown held no fear for them. Indeed, they were ever eager to seek new knowledge, regardless of the danger. And were you not also fearless, heedless even, in your determination?
my sire entered his dormancy before I was hatched. And so it was Ajdaya who kept my eggs safe and warm. It created a bond between us. Even long after I learned to fend for myself, I rarely strayed from her side. She was my guardian, my sister, my dear companion. And not a single day passes that I do not mourn her absence. No matter how deep the darkness, I would not surrender my search. I promised myself the time would come when we would once more take to the skies together. But I am Satrap now. The Radiant Host is here to serve, Your Excellency. Navdeen, what is this about? Sir Estinian told us of your predicament. For centuries you have protected Rads at Han, never showing your true self, hiding behind a curtain and living only in service to the people. Your dedication meant more to us than your deceit, and so did we accept you as our rightful ruler. After all that you have sacrificed for this nation, did you imagine we would begrudge you your heart's desire? We survived the final days. We are a strong and proud people. We, the Radiant Host, will keep Thavnir safe in your absence. I am grateful for your loyalty and for your encouragement. And yet... Now you listen to me, Vashan. Oh! You are wearing that face, after all. As I have told you before, you are a little brother to us all. And if you are family, then so too is your sister. We are there for you if you need us. But do not ask us to sit by and watch while you abandon a sibling you have ached to rescue for millennia. succeed in opening the way it is only a matter of time all you need do is prepare to step through to the other side your excellency i wanted to thank you for building the orphanage it means so much that my sister and i will have a place to be together safe and happy and I hope that you and your sister can be together again too mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Estinian has a way with children <laughs> mm -hmm. you wallow in uncertainty forever You're saying I should seize this chance. Take heart and protect them well. Such were the words I once said to you. And here I stand, failing to live up to them. If my heart is torn, I am fit to protect neither Ajdaya nor Razadhan. My people, I have come to a decision. Vashan will depart Thavne for a time. My dragon self will remain in the palace, but only to conduct the satrap's most essential duties. While I am focused on controlling this vessel, there may be matters that escape my attention. I rely on you, my trusted friends, to watch over one another until I return. Take care and fair fortune, brother. 
Many tears would be shed should you come to harm. I would not dare make you cry. <laughs> They're not going to sleep. You surprised me, Estinian. For a lone move, you have shown an unusual degree of involvement in helping Vitra reach this conclusion. It was for the greater good. The worm's thundering sighs were keeping his citizens awake at night. Ah, sure. 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 <laughs> An unusual crew we have here. I would rather not bother the other scions with aught less than a dire threat to the star. Now onto specifics. Unlike the first, where the halt flood of light were halted before the devastation was complete, the thirteenth was utterly subsumed by darkness. We explore the void in stages, withdrawing to safety after each foray. Mm. Then we have a base camp near the bit. Ah. So the Megaduta is going to be one of our... Hmm. We're going to have a base of operations. A point to project power. Conducting our expedition out of the Rising Stone will raise just as many questions, recruiting too many scions. Alright, so here in Ratsadhan, we will look like local expeditions. Oh, he's been living in the palace! <laughs> All the chambers are currently hosting great mounds of treasures we carried out of the vault. Once the Foundation's activity begins in earnest, we can redistribute the trove and make a room or two ready for habitation. Alright.
in one of the scenes. Is that Xenos? I think that might be Xenos. Let paths unwalk, adventure spur, pulse quickens and spirit stir. And that's it for the MSQ. Okay. I'm going to head back to Darlingen. Let's unlock Mama Amelian's. Um, wait, is it? Wait, let me check. Yeah. Amelian's custom delivery. Where, where do I go to unlock it? Um, yeah, Old Charlene, that's right. Ah, oh, there it is. Gemstone Trader. Lady Amelians focus on a rather important social welfare endeavor. All right. I should dress up a little better if I'm gonna have dinner with Mama Amelians.
Ah! Oh! <laughs> Rowena as well. <laughs> I left my fire oven burning at home. <laughs> It's not her venture, she's here at Vlamin's invitation. <laughs> Three beautiful ladies. Studium is accepting foreign students. Huh. She plans to offer all necessary school supplies free of charge. Wow. Proposing an academic homestead program with Shalayan families. <laughs> Cultural exchange. A great deal of the Levier fortune was poured into outfitting the Ragnarok. Yep, that's right. Are you guys broke now? Uh, she needs a long-term financial backer. I'm all for noble causes, but you can't be suggesting we provide everything for free. <laughs> Were I to require the students repay some of their tuition? Some few could afford, it would be no different from a loan. Hmm. But with no prospect of income, I must decline your offer. Huh. She's finding herself reminiscing, reminiscing, reminiscing the time she spent in the Dravenian Heatherlands. The town was once tremendously effervescent, filled to the brim with inquiring souls, traveled to every corner of Eosia for pursuit of knowledge. Hmm. A hub of seekers of knowledge, no few merchants made a living, procuring research supplies. They in turn had immediate access to a reservoir of cutting-edge inventions. East Eldonaut Trading Company. Huh. Tatar- Oh dear. <laughs> Tataru introduced her to, um, what's his name again? Oh, she's FOMO. Rowena FOMO. <laughs> what the hell could possibly be giving this woman confidence to act so bafflingly indifferent? Her husband's supposed to be a big wig in the forum. Since reason, she may have heard rumblings of a Shalyan investing deeper into the education system. It'd be wiser to invest now. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> Students who end up attending the best or brightest of their respective nations. If I make them feel indebted to me now, they'll be obligated to repay the future once they become powerful, distinguished members of society. <laughs> A skilled artisan to procure necessary supplies. Demand is sure to be immense. <laughs> Avalians is playing the game. <laughs> T 
Kieran must be the source of what? Oh my god, I'm being played by I'm being played. Oh no. <laughs> Oh, inviting me home? Okay. See you soon. Huh. In time, I hope you see me not only as the mother of Alphano and Alice, but as your partner and friend. Oh, partner indeed! <laughs> Oh, she has really accepted a student from Thafnir. Who has she accepted as a student? Lady Miladine? Oh, she's cute. Master Alpha, no? Oh no! <laughs> the Warrior of Light in the flesh. <laughs> She's so excited. This is not the studium, it's the Lavalier estate. Yep, it's a huge house. This is your home? <laughs> Mila. <laughs> Miladine is usually reserved for when I'm in trouble. <laughs> Alright, she's going to expand the program. Classes at the studio will begin once the student had time to settle in. Procure necessities needed for their matriculations. Alright.
Yes, 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 I've done it before. Ethereal conductive quill. Okay, let's see. Custom deliveries. Oh, I've not done Akira either. Well, I'll, I'll head over to help Akira in a bit. Ethereal conductive quill. Okay, so I'll need quill components. Three of them, if I'm not wrong. Wait, no, not this guy. Wait, which merchant am I supposed to buy it from? Oh, there we go. Now we work on quality. We got this.
All right, let's make the delivery. It occurs to me that for all your prowess in battle, Elfano and Alice are wholly unaware of your remarkable skills as an artisan. I shall take this opportunity to boast of your many talents to them in my next letter. Oh. <laughs> oh, she's in uniform. Family has been traditionally alchemists. Okay. There are countless lives not even the most advanced medicine can save. She wants to wield magic, even if it means travelling far from Shalayan. Against her mother's wishes, but at her father's urging. Hmm... There's still much work to be done to ensure the students feel at home in Oshalayan. Emily Yens has a new request to make of me. Mm -hmm. Ethereal conductive focus. Okay.
Okay, let's do this. I have all three? Yep, I have all three. After everything I've heard of your grand adventures with Alphino and Alice, never in my wildest dreams did I believe we might find ourselves working together, but I could not have asked for a better partner. Mm -hmm. Glad to be working with you too. Alright, let's head to from old Shalayan to new Shalayan. <laughs> okay, where is it? It's uh, Ishgard and surrounding areas, Idol Shire. Okay, let's go help Art Kirat. Art Kirat, what do you need? Signature Boost Cookware. Three. I need three of them, so I will need nine.
Oops, I messed that up. Oh well, whatever. Speak of melody. <laughs> All right. He ain't piggy. He's my brother. <laughs> going on oh, Akira is freaking out Oh, that's the brother. <laughs> that tail was so obvious. <laughs> Piggy here is your brother. <laughs> Akira I know would not lower himself to be dressing up as livestock. <laughs> <laughs> Mapopo. Chief is disfigured hideously so that's why he wears a mask, he can't bear his <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep an eye on him. Okay. Where do you go? Ah, he's over there. Hanging out with the gobbles. A place where men and beastmen abide together in peace. He wants to speak to the goblins. Oh, 
but he's asleep. Oh no, he's not asleep. Motion to myself. Yep. Adoshire is a free nation. Birth, faith, race, such things no matter here. Oh no, the hard place is who at work is munchy. Upstanding citizens, true gobby friend. <laughs> oh, treasure hunters. <laughs> Midnight view. Give her a knowing wink. Peculiar choice of it. Uh, you always got a hot meal for us, blah blah blah. <laughs> uh, speaking well of him. There are only so many assassinations one can go in his sibling state. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, Chloe. Oh, don't mess with her. She's the most powerful. She's the most powerful creature in Eorzea. Uncle Akira? Chloe knows him. Always telling exciting stories. Lots of people trying to kill him, kidnap him, or marry him. Sometimes all at once. There's a little brother back at home. Some Boogaloo. <laughs> Chloe may never let Boogaloo. But Chloe likes him already. Chloe must work hard so Zoe can admire her uncle. <laughs> Boogaloo. <laughs> <laughs> Chloe's adorable. The secret is safe with me. Oh. I'll say it's not my brother I found, but another man. Farewell. Oh. As I have here, one day you will find your purpose. Something you want to protect no matter the cost. Road is long, many a winding turn. If you need a rest on your journey, you know you're always welcome here. Hmm. <laughs> if I review my beautiful face and all you can do is stare
Hard place decorative furnishing. Oh, raining very heavily. Okay, delivery son. Okay, now. Let's begin on Hildebrand. Alright, I've been looking forward to seeing Hildebrand again. Alright, where is he at? Born Eternal. Sleeping Gentleman, this one. Oh, this is the stalker, the creepy bastard who smells like cheese, followed Nashru from Gugane after stalking her for over five years. <laughs> Ever since she got sucked into the portal back east, scarring the world for signs of her. She's in Ratsat Han, huh? Nashu, hello. It's been a while. Oh my god, she's making bombs. Yep. 
Yeah, you guys got sucked into a portal, didn't you? Hildebrand has gone to the hibernation again. What about that weird portal business? <laughs> Yeah, so what what happened to you guys? So Google Mesh brought them home, okay. Gilgamesh has a score to settle. Huh. Wonder what that's about. Hmm, sus. I suppose I ought to get a look at the Man of View Man himself. He's asleep in the karma. I haven't been over to the Kama in a while. <laughs> Let me talk to the gemstone trader. Study Inspector Hildebrand, but why? Inspector's condition is reminis reminiscent of the Scions who were summoned to the first. Huh. Well, he's a soulless husk, which is less than I do. <laughs> We gotta find his soul.
Hmm, where is so? Probably went to the first to become the gentleman of darkness as you do. <laughs> I'll leave the soul searching to you. <laughs> the traditional medicine is just explosives, isn't it? All right, to the crystarium. So he is over, okay. Hmm. Have you met the inspector? Kumi, Burly, where's a monocle? Well meaning idiot. <laughs> that sounds familiar. <laughs> Our bounty hunter spite a man. Such a man when you're all battling. Oh. So he did see Hildebrand when we were... Huh. Thought he was gonna attack. <laughs> I stood there, strike a pose, trying to seduce or scare me. <laughs> did he die? You asked to which I asked. What am I, a chirurgeon? <laughs> Uh, hello. Oh, right! The new, the, the, the new warriors. <laughs> in a way, little in way of useful information. All we know is he appears without warning and strikes a disturbing pose. It's not cause harm, but you discount the shock of strange men that's circulating in the other end of <laughs> That miscreant, <laughs> I regret to say, is my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Question the locals of Sullen. It's nice to be back here.
Hello, you two. Oh, that fellow. I saw him the other day on the way home. I enjoy one too many libations after my buff and ended up wandering into the woods. Before I knew it, sound was dipping low, sky turned in dark, and I was beginning to wonder if I ever make it home. Then I felt a gentle tug at my arm. Would you believe it, the odd-looking man led me out of the forest and set me back on the road. I thanked him profusely, but he said nothing and struck his pose and walked off. <laughs> Sounds about right. Yeah, I see him. You bet I did. I was crossing the forest of the Lost Shepherd on my way to deliver fish. Out of nowhere, this odd man leapt in front of me. I thought he was a bandit at first. He abruptly turned to the side, curled his neck, put his fist to his head, as if to say, I don't know. It was baffling. I ran when I realized he wasn't going to do anything else. <laughs> he would have ran. What the fuck? Yes, I saw someone like that when I was out picking mushrooms. He even spoke to me. At first, I was repulsed by his form, but he only wanted to warn me that fell beasts lurk in the forest and I should be wary. Contrary to his appearances, he was actually quite gentlemanly. <laughs> he is the gentleman of darkness. Not only the poser caused no harm, he even helped people. So he's a gentleman, a suspicious one. Something contradictory. <laughs> Alright, Forest of the Lost Shepherd, let's go. Some folks might argue a suspicious gentleman is more dangerous than a man blatant in his villainy. This gentlemanliness could well be a ruse. <laughs> nah, he's just an idiot. Oh well, he will appear soon enough. Am I going to start dancing? Perform the Mender view. Familiar gentlemanly gyration zardies.
Why, why does he have angel wings? What's with the makeup? Light water in the fucking. <laughs> That's no sin eater. <laughs> That's the idiot. <laughs> it's the gentleman of light. <laughs> I'm the forgiven gentleman, the bar of sins, light warden extraordinary. <laughs> You occasionally moonlight as a zombie overlord, but trust me, you're the gentleman inspector. <laughs> you're acquainted with this uh, gentleman? Yes. <laughs> we go way back. He lost his memories? Time to bomb him. Nashu's delight! Explosives? We're still trying to save him, right? Oh! We we are we, we are playing volleyball. White, we killed him. Nah, he's fine. <laughs> the warrior of light is just so used to this bullshit. Again, I resign myself to Nashu's ungentlemanly methodology. But you too, my British friend. <laughs> oh, all of us got the echo here?
<lacht> Asuras Fisto! Mang LB Tree! <lacht> <laughs> the scene I don't even know what the hell is going on. <laughs> what the fuck is this? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> Even the scene eater was freaking out. <laughs> Even the scene eater was freaking out. Run for your lives, it's a scene eater. You get tempered? Doesn't seem likely. The most ridiculous memory I've ever glimpsed. <laughs> Yep, you're in a totally different world. To think I've transcended the very boundaries of time and space. No worries, my adoring fans. Hildebrand, Asian Enquiry Inspector Extraordinaire, will be with you for fright. <laughs> I can't help but feel this is not what the echo was intended for. <laughs> Alright, let's figure out how to get you back to the first. Soul Vessel. Cursory description was more than enough for me to grasp the concept completely. It's not unlike brewing a perfect cup of coffee. Require the service of a skilled soul sommelier. I know the soul sommelier named Big Look. Even in this world, you rub shoulders with the cream. Let's pay Big Look a visit.
seeing as he's a friend of the Warrior of Darkness, I should have known this Hildebrand is no ordinary man. Ah, the genius soul Somalia. Recommended by Tian. What an adorable puppy you have. <laughs> so, what? Pardon, but there seems to be some confusion. Puppy? Who is this imbecile? <laughs> have, a, have a mind to dig him a hole and throw him in it. Yep, he's a friend. Another one of your friends that need to be sent back to the source? Have you forgotten how complex and difficult it was to do it the last time? Yet you waltz in here and ask this favor of me. <laughs> With the air of one shopping for a new hat. <laughs> His case is no different from the last. His present only in soul as they were. Oh, he's definitely not lacking resistance. After what he's, he's lived through, it'd be anticlimactic if he dies like that. <laughs> I get the distinct impression that the gods themselves could not kill him if they tried. And they have! <laughs> Come along, Hilda, I can't be bothered to remember that name. All right, that's quick. I won't pretend if I, <laughs> I won't pretend I understood even a fraction of what happened. Back to Ratsat Han. Surprisingly cheap teleportation.
Oh, where's the body? I have his soul here, but where's his body? Alright. A large sack. All right. Editor of the Tafnarian Truth. Huh. A reporter? The kidnapper is not of this star. Came from the heavens. Saucer ship airships. He's he's an alien. Oh no, this guy is a conspiracy nut. Abducted by aliens. Oh no. <laughs> It's not a newspaper, it's a tabloid. Oh, and then there's that stalker right behind the plants over there. Final days are the work of the alien invaders. Are we talking about the Onicrons? Oh no. To go to the moon and save the inspector at once. <laughs> I think it was a few, mat few material short of a full melt. <laughs> what the at least he got the floppy ears part right. Nash, we can walk around with me. Yay! Let's take a photo with Nash.
sold him his chocobo. Wow. Where's he going? Salt winds welcome. Hmm. No, oh, help him out. All right, do you see anyone? I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure Mandeville is not in there. Sex seems a little bit too small. Oh. <laughs> oh shit, he really is in there. Give me a second, I'm... I need to use the toilet again. Ah.
All right, I'm back. Hmm, who is his client? Um, what the heck is this? Who is this Dr. Lugai? One of the strongest and most resilient in all the worlds, the Mandeville man. Weathered countless explosions, multitude of martial abuses. Devastating suplex that he himself witnessed. Journey, survive a journey to Dalamud itself, survive the lesser moon's fall with nary a scratch. Oh, oh shit! It's 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 the Galleon Professor guy. Did the Telephoroi gone for good? The vast fortunes of House Brutus is at his disposal. Oh no, he's running away with... Not sure you do with... Oh wow. They're all fast runners. Holy shit, she just threw his soul! It's no longer purple! <laughs> oh! Did he push the self-destruct button? Oh no! Oh! Oh no! <laughs> He's blasting off again! To the moon! Oh shit, he's really flying to the moon! Oh no, he's not. He's... Welcome back. Welcome back. <laughs> Press all the buttons. Press all the buttons. Oh no!
Ding dong. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell was that? Oh, I guess he's going to jail. Of course. <laughs> of course. Oh! He's awake! My sincere apologies for causing you such trouble, my loyal assistants, but rejoice! Hildebrand, agent of inquiry, inspector extraordinaire, has made his triumphant return! <laughs> what the f- What? What? The conspiracy nut was right. What the heck is this? Yeah, well, powerful course. <laughs> what the f what the hell was this? This is not the first time he's taken to the sky without warning, but this is a little disappointing. No use for crying over flying inspectors, let's return to Ratsad Han. Oh, he really did go to the moon. He <laughs> just spit him out. <laughs> Oh, 
What is that? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Men of you Men of you anime ending Find the crime Crack the taste in a flash Test If you're a gentleman flare Our agent of inquiry Heal the brand Men of you <laughs> Oh my god It kidnapped the stalker as well. <laughs> that was like a city hunter ending. Alright. Now that that's done, there's actually something I've been meaning to do. Let's head back to... The mining... Yeah, let's get the mining the mining story out of the way. The mining and uh, botany storylines out of the way. 300, 600. Been a while since I've been back in um, Uda. Da, 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 da. Okay. No, no, Wato in Idleshire, all right. Alright, the objective here is to unlock this. Enhance GP generation. This This lot of is dressed up as a gobby. <laughs> That's adorable. Hello. All 
All right, they need help on a project. A god ruler. In our dreams of reclaiming the Shalian ruins. Okay. Everyone's dressed up as a goblin. <laughs> That's adorable. They make the gob roller armor. Sun same. Makes the interior. Foshwida makes um the armor. Okay. This guy is making the insights. In charge of the project. Yep, yep, yep. Mine materials for the construction of the gob roller's armor, okay? But they're arguing over something. Okay. Armor needs heavy. He needs heavier armor, but for Shrida says fangs and claws doesn't require armor. A one wants magic defense and one wants physical defense. Hmm. So is there a way where we can get defend both? Be through. All right. Strike heels. What is that? Striped heels, where's the striped heels? Is 
You know what? Let's see. Uh, no, it's quest item, so it doesn't pop up here. It's in Gurabania. Oh, okay. So where is this? Oh, there it is. Striped heels. Okay, okay. Alright, and since it's along the way and it's pretty nearby, I'll just head over to New Redania and pick up the botanist quest. Hmm. All right, buddy, I got your Mithra right here. Balance between magic and physical defense.
It's going to weigh the vehicle down. Nope. We create a new kind of armor with this new material. All right. Compromises. All right, what's next? This time is Zenso and stack blocks they are arguing with the controls. Okay, what's their issue now? Everyone's designs to be hero friendly. Any imbecile who knows goblins are suited to operate such machinery. <laughs> what sense does it make for races that are hardly going to use the thing? Hmm. Specialization versus generalization. But if it's friendly for goblins, it's friendly for Lalafels too, yeah? Speak with the goblin merchant. Better iron ore, okay. Ruby C, wow, so far away. Alright, what do we need for the botany? Alright, relax, relax. Ah, Fufucha is here. <laughs> Hmm. So they have no issues with quality, just quantity. They need to branch out and trade with other cities. Created green grub mud plots to cultivate seeds. Okay.
All right, so we're developing. We'll be developing. Um, what do you call it? Idleshire's agriculture. Okay. The first botanist herself, yep. Oh, you're calling me Saint Tian. <laughs> So she wants to hit the Gridania first, okay. She's fangirling. So they are cultivating a new species of Popoto. Alright. The soil is not as fertile. So they put faith in the sturdy Popoto. Okay. So, yeah, that makes sense. Popotos are very ubiquitous in Eorzea. So why would one want it? Okay. With selective breeding, we can give birth to one Popoto unique to Dravania. Okay, so... Okay, okay. Get a wild Popoto, we'll plant these and crossbreed. Okay. East End. Where is the East End? Ah, here. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da.
There you are. Wild Popotos. Just gonna carry it all the way back to Gridania. <laughs> Just carrying it all the way back to Idoshire. Holy shit. Okay. Alright, so now we are growing popotos here. Popotos are coming nicely, but we're not there yet. Visit the guild to discuss crossbreeding in further detail. Okay. Hmm, <laughs> harnessing wow specimens hardiness. Unable to incorporate any elements that set our popodos from the rest. Hmm. Stories of a popoto species as Walker's popoto. Cultivated on the island of Viewbrand. Perfect for steels. Okay. So let's go get some Walker's Popoto and crossbreed them. Red Rooster's dead. Let's go ask them where we can find it.
Oh, fastest way is to just... So it's at Lower Lanos here. So what we're going to do is we're going to crossbreed Lanosian Popotos with Wild Girabanian Popotos. Haven't cultivated Walker's Popotos since Calamity. Huh. So, is it extinct? We've been shipping them off to the Far East. Hingans go mad for good walker poboto. Haven't grown them for some time. Oh, so maybe maybe they're growing walkers poboto in the Far East now. Alright, so I'm off to the Far East, to Kugane. It's to Kugane, the cheapest way to get over there is teleport to FC house, and then pop over back into Kugane. Okay, where? Okay, I need to go to K Kuganidori Market. Yamabuki probably knows. Walker potato, a tasty potato I've never stopped. Completely out. Um, Hikinami in the Ruby Sea. Okay. Hey, the Isari. Along the way back, I can go to Hell's Lid and uh, mine that um, feather iron ore. Use the cultivated workers but to north of the village. His workers declined not enough to harvest. Oh, all right. Hmm. 
Nice. Time to hit the hell slit. Get photo in. Okay. There it is. Okay. We have a mining vein here. There we go. Shire. It's gonna be an expensive teleport. I got your ore. Metal is light as feather. Create the vehicle controls, decrease the weight. You can design something special for both species. Why not make two sets of interchangeable pedals for the gob roller? One suitable for size of goblins, alafels, and smaller races, the other for the realm's larger races. Ah. He hopes that his workers can all work in harmony.
it's late for a job. Oh no. Oh shit. He needs he needs to talk to Rowena. Uh uh later. Um <laughs> I'm gonna help with the botanist first. Speak to Rowena later. Alright, the walkers put bottles are here. Hey there! Been a while since I've seen Sony. I'm also a culinarian. <laughs> The girl needs confidence in herself. But you aren't you already a botanist? When the first generation of crossbred Popotos sprouted, every single one withered fast. There must be a Popoto disease. Okay. Okay, that's bad. Alright. Time to speak to Rowena first. Oh wow, task driver. Need to go to Yanxia. Mine serpentine for her, my goodness. Hmm. The crossbred proboto the hypothesis is that the crossbred propotos have inherited both the Oh the walker the walker's proboto has vulnerability to disease and pest. Okay, okay. Hmm. Instead of inheriting both the strengths, they're inheriting both the weaknesses.
probably not your fault. Faint white glint. What is this? What is this in the soil? Chalky stone. The soil is the problem. Have some bloody confidence in yourself for once. Alright, we figured out what the stones are. It's probably lime. Seaweed known as Noriso. 20 clumps of Noriso. It's at the bottom of the Ruby Sea. My god. Alright, alright. Rasen Kaikyo. Is this it? Is this Rasen Kaikyu? Not here. Maybe it's not underwater but it's on land.
Is this it? Ah, there we go. Serpentine and Yenxia. I guess this is not it.
Ah, oh, there we go, Serpentine. To Idol Shire. Gotta empty my inventory a little bit. Nice. Alright, Slave Driver, I got your Serpentine. Yeah, no, no, what though? I got your stuff. Oh, what's going on? Project is stuck. It's a sensu. Quick sticks is missing. Is it something about visiting Snow Fix? Alright, where's quick sticks? Chivalry shakes as his worker straight fists out instead of tongue flaps. Quick sticks used to be an Illuminati, but as they got crazier, he ran away from bad hobbies. Hmm. He made bank pot so up lenders and gobbies can sweat work together for bright future. Hmm.
right. Hmm. They realize they've tested his patience for too long. But they need his guiding hand. Hmm. It's not my place to say anything. The God Roller must be completed, but we changed our approach to the subject. Finish the God Roller. Focus on working together as a team, not a collection of individuals. All right. Nothing is impossible if they work together. You guys can finish the project. I'm sure you can. Alright, let me settle the botany first. And then we can finish the final tier of both these quests together. Oh wait, I'm supposed to go back in anyway. <laughs> Silly me. Oh well, since I'm going back in here anyway. The gob roller is close to completion. They are able to run tests. The tests did not give the results they hoped. Cerulean engine output was lower than expected. Hmm. But if they could increase the power output, the pistons will not be able to sustain. They need new pistons with different sturdier material. Alright. Alright, they want me to ask the miners guild where to find such a material okay all right back to the botany Got your reagent. Let's figure out what's causing the popotos to die. What's wrong? The chalky stone is an egg? It's an earworm. Huh. Earworm requires a host plant to feed on. The mud plots were only recently created. Why are there eggs of such vermin lurking around? Earworm enter a stage of... The eggs enter a state of dormancy within the mother's corpse. 
I do the shell. Look into past case of ill worm infestation to formulate a plan of action. They found a solution to the pest problem. Alright, so talk with food pucha. Alright, so either alchemy or companion planting. Hmm. So I guess we're going with companion planting. So we're going to plant something that will get rid of the earworms. Flowering plant called Rauger's Streak. Hmm. In Garabania. Okay. Okay, so I'm guessing we're going to Rogos Reach first. Nope, Castrum Orients. I like you read this. Time to ask around. Doesn't know. Okay. Uh, 
hasn't heard of it in a long time. Wildflowers out in the mountain. Okay. Ask one more, but where is this last guy? Uh, oh, there he is. Oh, it's out of stock. The Royal Hunting Grounds. That's the Royal Hunting Grounds. Ah, there it is. Where is it? I don't see it. This doesn't seem right. Give me a second. Oh shit, it's an unspoiled node. It, it should be coming up soon, so I I think I'm gonna be fine. That's why waiting? Why not?
Okay. To Uda. I'm almost done. Once I finish these two quests, I'll be good for tonight. Oh man, I'm going back to Garabania. Uh, uh, uh. Slow wash at Garabania. Where's this slow wash? Okay, where is this slow wash? There it is. Is it another? Oh man, give me a second. Uh, Pamelite. Oh well, looks like looks like it's gonna be a bit of a wait. Eight a.m. or eight p.m. Yeah, was your time. Uh, looks like it's gonna be a bit of a wait. Ah. Uh. Two more hours eros your time.
Almost there. One more hour Eorzean time. Alright, it should be spawning now. There we go. Here it is. Finally, to Idoshire. I got your pomeloid. So it'll be good for your pistons. A 
I look forward to seeing the gob roller. All right, let's have a look. Ah, look at that, the gob ruler. Oh, did the wheels just... Okay, that, 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 that... Yeah, fuck physics. <laughs> it works, but yeah, fuck physics. Oh, quick six is back. Oh, this is how a mother chocobo feels when her chicks leave the nest. He went to her old friend to ask for advice. And got caught up in other business. <laughs> Told them to let them know that he'll be delayed. Told them to let them know that he'll be delayed. Oh, you went to ask Bray Fox. Yeah, Bray Fox is a little bit of a dummy. Everyone is just giving each other credit now. I know you're Illuminati, but you decided to join the good guys. Yay.
Let's plant some Rauger streaks and get rid of those Eelworms. Wow! Are the popotos blooming? Alright. <laughs> kind of prefer your old your old costume a garb only given to the most accomplished of botanists no wonder there are so few botanists <laughs> first botanist of Idleshire <laughs> Oh, <laughs> that's so cute. Wow. <laughs> this place is pretty now instead of just a bunch of mud and... Oh, that is so cool. All right, let's head back to Uda and finish up, finish up the miners' quest. The cheapest way to get to Uda. free of charge. <laughs> Though mostly because I might as well get this done and out of the way before I head over. Ah, not bad. Oh, oh well. The daily mini cat pot. Yeah, between Uda and Ghost also free of charge. Alright. Actually, yeah, hustling strip, and then I can take the mini etheroid. Why 
and a skill. There we go. There we go. Idleshire is a place where men and goblin work together in harmony. And we're done for tonight. Yay! Ooh, new chapter of New Game Plus. Fantastic. Alright. So now that that's done... I'll see you guys next time. Maybe at that point we can um do the machinist quest, the bl the dark knight quest. Yes, the machinist and the dark knight quest, and the red mage quest. Yes. Until then. <laughs>